October 28th. Five days on foot. Still can't sleep. Outside it's like nothing happened. Sky looks wrong, that's all. Hike back to overturn that guard truck near Toquerville. After blisters heal, maybe. Looks like USGS team was researching something here in cave. Cleared out when bombs fell. Left equipment behind. Probably thought they had families to run back to. October 29th. Char. Must have said this out loud a thousand times walking here. Maybe writing it will feel more like you heard. You were right. I was north of Spanish Fork. Took the 77 along Provo Bay to steer clear of town. Would have been home in an hour. Engine died. Truck just stopped. So did a Chrysler in the other lane. Knew right away. First new kid saw Lake City inside a minute. I was looking south. Lucky man. Flash behind me so bright world looked on fire. Old couple from the Chrysler starts screaming they can't see. Didn't watch you die, Char. Saved my eyes. Counted twelve more flashes next seven minutes. Ground shook each time. Eighteen seconds later. When nothing hit for half hour, took a look. Globe of fire where you and Alex died. Didn't kid myself. Didn't know what to do. Grabbed my pack and rifle. Saw to the old couple. Set them up against car. Let them hold and comfort each other. Told them I was going to get help. Everything be okay. One bullet through both heads. Instant. Five day hike back to Zion. You told me. Stop running off to the wild. Man belongs with his family. You were right. You were right. You were right. You were right. Wasn't there to hold you and my boy. Died without me. Never touch you or him again. Should shoot myself. What I deserve. Can't. Maybe soon. October 31st. Black rain falling outside. Geiger jumping. Should let it kill me, but bottling water from back of cave all the same. November 2nd. Sounds dead outside, but can't look. Geiger goes lethal 15 feet from cave mouth. Do the math. Radiation goes down before water runs out, or I'd never leave this cave. January 1st. Happy New Year. Two months in cave. Still lethal outside. Don't get it. In army they said two to four weeks cleared fallout. Less than a month's water left. Been mopping condensation off cave walls. Ringing shirt into bottles. Trading calories for H2O. Food stocks holding. Thanks USGS. There was even a chance I'd see the two of you again. I'd run outside. January 10th. Sounded like windstorm out there for two days. Radiation down 500. What happened? January 15th. Took a peek. Snow. It glows green. January 28th. Radiation low enough I could risk short exposure outside. More important, cave stream now drinkable if I use rad drugs. January 30th. There is nothing live out there. May 5th. A comeback goes on. Add prickly pear to list of survivors with honey mesquite and banana yucca. Odd nodules, mutations, but safe to eat. Harvesting oh so careful. Never take more than a fifth. Mouth waters every time I'm about to eat something that isn't from a can. May 7th. Clouds of those stinging flies near fallen tree I call the napper. Little flashes in the cloud. Something dragonfly size that zaps the midair and scoops them up. Something new. May 19th. Bighorn sheep. A family. Ram, you, and little one. Fucking goddammit. 
May 20th. The sheep were different. Brawny. You had curved horns just like the ram. Seen some tiny lizards, but this is first time I've seen animals that big. Fingers crossed. Five to ten years breeding. Fresh meat, hides, horns. I know it's time to go back, Char. When winter has passed. June 14th. Just got back. Tired. Good scrounging along the way. Ended up dragging back a cart of stuff. Right tomorrow. Sleep. June 15th. Departed April 10th. Walked to Salt Lake City took 15 days. Would have been 7 to 9 back in the old days, but had to circle pockets of radiation and foraged a long way. Don't know what I was thinking. Imagined I'd find my house, dig the rubble, find something. Your bones, I hoped, and little nuts. Would have buried them. Here in Zion, maybe. Salt Lake City is mostly craters. Warped steel girders where high rises sat. Mounds of bricks. Never found our house. Didn't even find a street. What wasn't a crater was scorched clean. Want to believe it was fast. A flash. Both of you vaporized. Lies to make me feel better. I'll never know. Which part of city got it first? Northeast and you both died in a blink. Farther away and you burned alive screaming or the blast broken glass and bits of brick and wood splinter shredding you like hamburger. Look at it, coward, and listen. Don't turn away. Face it. If you'd been brave, lucky man, you would have found a spot and blown your brains out. But not you. You took your time walking back. Made a shopping trip of it. Scrounger. The truck was still there on the 77 North of Spanish Fork. The Chrysler's too, but no sign of the old couple's bones. Outside Nafai, I caught a trail. Three men, tracks heading towards Fountain Green. Thought about following, but didn't. Stupid fantasy of friends. More likely cannibals. June 20th. Took two days to build door and electrify it. No soliciting assholes. Home sweet fucking home. September 20th. I count 28 of them. 11 adult males, 8 females, 9 children aged 2 to 10. Some rifles and pistols in bad repair. Old world clothes. Ready? September 22nd. Got close enough last night to hear them talk. Spanish, I think. From Mexico. Heard them say, Paradiso, a bunch. Think that means paradise. Here to stay, then. Seem harmless. Seem. October 5th. The one I call Maria is pregnant. Think the father is Jose, but she spends a lot of time with Pablo, too. October 7th. Pedro ran out to pee in the stream and would have seen me if he looked to his left. Too close. Need to give them some space. November 10th. Jose broke his leg chasing a bighorn. Too far from camp for them to hear. Told myself to leave it be, but couldn't. 300 yards from their camp did my best Jose's screaming imitation till a bunch of them came looking. Then strung them along to the crests where they could hear the real Jose. Probably useless. Compound fracture. Broke the skin. November 11th. Infection. So many goddamn words are nearly the same. Think I'd be fluent. But anyway, Jose's leg has got it, so he's gonna die. Nature for you. Of course they're giving prayer a try. November 12th. Left a bottle of antibiotics on a rock outside their camp last night. They thank God. Dios, of course. As though that asshole saw fit to burn the world, but still cared enough to leave some medicine on a rock. November 15th. Jose will always limp, but otherwise he'll be okay. Good deed for the month. Will they make it through the winter? February 11th. 
fuckers killed all the men. I think they would have taken the women alive, but Marie and Selena opened fire, and some of the others went for their guns, so they shot them down and some of the kids with them. If I could have warned them. February 12th. Elena and Carmen and five children still alive, being kept in a pen. There are more than 100 of these assholes in blue suits. Every suit says 22 on the back. Why? Armed to the teeth with submachine guns, pistols. Estimate 60% male. Everyone seems to follow the dark haired guy, but can't get close enough to tell. Assholes are disciplined. Patrols, sentries. They mean business. So I go in at night and get the women and children out. Where to next? But I have to get them out. Have to. February 13th. Recon during night. Well organized. Sentries along most approaches, but stream not covered. Are they sick? Lots of coughing fits. Tuberculosis. Women and children still in pen. We'll try to infiltrate by stream tomorrow night. February 14th. They ate them. February 19th. Ambush along Riverside Trail. Six males killed. Heard of their coughing a mile away. Used their grenades to booby trap bodies. Kept half. Secured six SMGs. 500 rounds of 10 millimeter. Six frags. February 20th. Ambush along Riverside Trail. Two males die checking bodies. Killed two more with a rifle. Shot one through calf and let asshole crawl off to spread message. Coughed like I'd shot into the lungs. February 23rd. Ambush half mile east of Coal Pits Wash. Eight males killed. February 28th. Ambush in the Narrows. Six males killed. Took a 10 millimeter through thigh. Steel jacket. Missed for moral. Lucky. Used tourniquet to make sure no blood splattered on rocks back to cave. I've set traps all along entrance passage, but if they find me it will be a matter of time. Still, 24 confirmed kills in 10 days. At least one third their combat force. Not bad for an old man. March 2nd. Lucky, 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 lucky. Patrol was small, three men. Screaming woke me. Point man caught under deadfall. Panic fire ricocheted into the cave, almost hit me. Crawled forward and killed them all with SMGs. Nearly used frags. Stupid. Finger and pin when remembered ricochets. Leaving at once. No other patrols in area, but they'll be searching arrows for these three. Taking as much food as I can drag with me and heading to cave south. January 13th. The coffers are gone, finally. All 34 that still lived. Ate their dead for strength, then struck out southeast. Victory. Ten months of killing. All I feel is cold. They deserved every goddamn bit of it. January 17th. Thought I was dreaming, but the screams were real. For a moment, thought they tricked me. Just pretended to leave Zion, then sent a patrol to track me down. But the screams were a woman's. Edged around corner and passageway to have a look. One vaulter, ankle deep in bear trap. Leveled my SMG, but the way she was crying stopped me. How she screamed when she saw me. Been their boogeyman a long time. Name Sylvia. Claims she ran away from them. Calls them evil people. Children of the devil. Turns out they were sick after all. Something they caught in a vault they lived in. She never came down with it. Yet. So help me, I wound up being her nurse. January 18th. Her story matches what I learned from my interrogations last year, but according to her, let's just say it was bad to be a woman in that group. So when they left, she slipped away. She knows next to nothing about living outside a vault. Says she wants to learn. September 9th. 
never been so scared in my life. Canada wasn't scary, just sickening. The criminality of it. The end of the world wasn't scary. When I knew you and Alex were dead, I didn't have anything left to be scared about. It just went on for some reason. I wasn't scared fighting the Vaulters. It was like I kept daring them to finish me. When I killed them, I think it was the closest I came to feeling happy in years. Sylvia is pregnant. And I am terrified. Ridiculous old man. A father again at 47. In this world. She's so excited and so trusting. Says it's God's will that we have this child. Like nothing can go wrong. You see, Char, she doesn't know about you and Alex. Never told her. Almost did sometimes, but... What you and I had, it seemed wrong to share it. More like an old man not wanting his young wife to know how he failed the one that come before. Hiking in a Tocqueville for medical books and supplies. This will be done right. I'm sorry, Char. Hope you can forgive me. March 5th. Baby was breech. Would have been a son. Michael. Did my best to turn him. Failed. Must have done Caesarean too late. Had to put Sylvia out and she never woke up. Buried them south of the Narrows. Well, this time I was by their side. So much better. I think I can finally do this. Blow my fucking brains out all over this goddamn cave. August 22nd. Ten sets of tracks half mile northeast of cave entrance. Barefoot. August 23rd. Saw them through scope. Corpses walking around. Finally gone crazy. Dementia, maybe. August 24th. I'm not crazy, they're real. God damn it, they are real! Rush me the moment they saw me, snarling like animals. They look like corpses, but don't smell rotted. I'll be putting them out of their misery, doing for them what I could never do for myself. September 3rd, the last of them, all gone. February 5th, happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday you useless old dinosaur, happy birthday to me. Happy 60th, what do you get a man who has everything? A bottle of whiskey and a 12 gauge slug through the roof of the mouth. Woo! Come now. What do I have to prove to myself that I've lived long enough? I'm a shriveled old man. White beard. Seen enough sunrises and sunsets. Saw the big sunset. Been hanging on through the long night 36 years now. Ridiculous. Not kidding myself into thinking there's anything on the other side of this. Fine. Things weren't so bad before I was born. Char and Alex. Sylvia and Michael who could have been. Thoughts of the beloved dead before dying. Goodbye, Zion. February 6th. Fucking didn't do it. Coward as usual. Maybe two bottles next year. Twenty-four of them. Half boys, half girls. Youngest is eight, maybe. Oldest, thirteen, fourteen. Dirty and scrawny, been on foot a long time. Children's Crusade. Struck camp on nearly the same spot as Los Mexicanos. Thirty years and a lifetime ago. I've spent two nights listening to them. English. Literate. One of them reads stories while the little ones fall asleep. They escaped someplace they called the school, but can't figure out where it was. When they want a little one to behave, they tell them to stop or the principal will get you. Principal better not show up or I'll blow his goddamn head off. 
I can still shoot straight. January 2nd. I've been leaving notes for them, and gifts. They like the books. Started with stories, but moved on to weapons manuals, medical books, practical stuff. In the notes, well, it's embarrassing. Almost like those cards people used to give to each other. Everything sweet and loving. I tell them to read and to learn and to make the most of their new home. I tell them that I'm giving them Zion as a gift to make up for all the sorrows of their lives so far and all of the sorrows man has visited on man. I tell them to be kind to each other and modest. I tell them never to hurt each other, but that if someone else comes along and tries to hurt them, to strike back with righteous anger. Stuff like that. I sign every note the father because, well, just because. January 18th. Have I mentioned that I'm dying? Mine's still sharp. Lungs are the problem. Might be cancer. Cough's been getting worse for months. Finally, there's blood in it. Getting harder to visit my little friends. Breath so short. I've given away most of what I own. They'll find the rest in the caves when they get a little older. I don't want them to find me, though. The father is a broke-down old man. Disappointment. It's time. I don't want another birthday. January 23rd. It's cold enough that I won't last long and I mount up to the Red Gate. I think I've got enough breath in me to make it. I'll just lie down and stare at the sky. Feels right. I hope they'll do well. I hope no harm comes to them, from within or without. I did my best to prepare them with the last few notes. Said something kind about each of them, what makes each one special. Told them the father was pleased by their kind natures and that it would be up to them to handle things on their own from now on. That I'd be silent but still watching and still caring. Lying then. Oh yes, lied to you, Char, and Alex, and Sylvie, told you I'd be with you forever, but I wouldn't go back and unsay it once if I could. What was the point of it all? So many failures, but I never forgot your face, or Little Nuts, or, sorry, Sylvie's. They used to say that happened after a while, but it never did for me. Maybe the only point of all this living was to keep those pictures in my head going for as long as I could. It was the only life I could give you. Not a day went by without. It wasn't choice. I chose to die again and again. Just never did. Body had its own drive. Well, the little ones will need it. Species will need it if it's to continue. That blind drive onward. I wish them well. It's been a gift to me, at the end of it all, to behold innocence. Goodbye, Zion.